this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good evening and welcome to our 33rd Quadrennial General Council of the Fire Baptized Holiness Church of God of Americas. We are so excited that each one of you have joined us on today. I am Sister Camila Baldwin Blackson, one of your Zoom hosts. And to make sure we all have a wonderful and great experience on today, you notice that all participants are muted. This is to ensure who's all on program can be heard clearly with no interruptions. We want to always treat this platform as you would at your local assembly. Please make sure you always leave yourself on mute as this service is being recorded. Please be mindful of your surroundings and attire. If there is anything you don't want anyone to see, you can always turn your camera off. But as always, we would love to see each one of you. In closing, we encourage you all to use the chat features to share your praises, testimony, and interact with everyone in today's service. With that being said, have a great service. Now, at this time, please receive our Bishop of the Third Episcopal Diocese, the Right Reverend Bishop Alonzo L. Rogers. God bless. Thank you, Sister Blackston. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I greet each of you tonight in the precious name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. It's wonderful to be here in this 33rd Quadrennial General Council of the Fire Baptized Holiness Church of God of the Americas. Come on and bless the Lord in this place. Come on and bless the Lord in this place. Do I have some praisers in the house? Do I have some praisers in the house? Do I have some praisers in the house tonight? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Surely the Lord has been good to us, and we're grateful that you have assembled with us this evening on this occasion. Let's prepare our hearts for a time of worship and the reception of his word. Oh, are you ready tonight to see what God has to say to us? He has been speaking and he will speak again. Yes, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth be silent before him. Oh, hallelujah to God. Yes, we bless you and we praise you today. Please at this time, receive the ruling elder of the New England district, Yes, Elder Mark Ballou. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Rogers. Our scripture reading tonight will be coming from Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless his word tonight. Now let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you tonight. We thank you for who you are and who you continue to be. We thank you for how you've blessed our, our general council thus far, how you've met us in every word, how you've met us in every session. Oh God, we pray now that you continue to bless. Oh God, touch our bishops and their families, oh God. Strengthen them, oh God. Continue to keep them encouraged. Oh God, touch every elder. Strengthen them and their families, oh God. Oh God, bless my family, my wife and family, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. And oh God, your preacher tonight, oh God. I pray that you continue to strengthen her. Continue to anoint her as she brings forth the word tonight, oh God. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. We pray over this nation, oh God, and the leaders of this nation, oh God, that you will speak to their hearts and their minds and the decisions that they make, oh God. And now this church, oh God, this church that you've chosen, this church that you've chosen for this day and this time, oh God, continue to anoint us, continue to speak to us and through us, that we may encourage others to come to Christ, oh God, that we may continue to build your kingdom, oh God. Help us to be doers of your word, oh God, that you may be willing to use us in this time, oh God. We thank you for every service 
that has happened so far and even those that are to come. We expect to see you. We're looking forward to you. We're looking forward to what you say to us and what you do in us, oh God. We thank you now for this and all things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now please receive for your opportunity to give the presiding prelate of the Third Episcopal Diocese, Bishop Alonzo L. Rogers. God bless you and thank you, Elder Ballou. We have come now to this time after our devotional exercises to bring before God our gifts. Tonight is a great night. It is a night where we have opportunity to sow into the kingdom. The scripture declares, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. I'm asking tonight, are you really ready to be blessed? When we are in person, there are times that we're asked to contribute certain gifts. Tonight, I'm going to ask, it's so good to see, and we honor our bishops, Bishop Frazier, Bishop Davis, and all of our national workers. It's so good to see all of our ruling elders tonight. And we bless the Lord for all of our pastors, our delegates, our general officers that are here. This is a time that we're going to ask you to sow into the kingdom. Get your seed ready tonight. Get ready to sow that seed tonight. Are you ready to be blessed? I'm going to ask those of you that will to contribute out of your bounty and sow into the kingdom. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Elders, do you mind helping us out tonight? Do you mind sowing that seed as you're expecting God to move on your behalf? Pastors, are you ready to sow that seed tonight as you believe God to increase you? Saints of God, are you willing to sow that seed tonight as you're believing God to increase you, to bless you, and to return to you those things that your heart so desires? Well, this is your opportunity. Come on, somebody. I'm asking every elder to sow $50 tonight. Every pastor, sow $25 tonight. Come on, let's be a blessing. Every member tonight, every person that's here that's not an elder or that's not a pastor, to sow that $10 gift. Come on, take that seed, sow that seed. Take the opportunity tonight to prepare your hearts. Get that device, get that phone, get that iPad, whatever it takes. Go to Cash App, find the uh, Cash App um, of uh, the Fire Baptized or FBH Love and sow that seed tonight. Thank you so much. Amen. Cash App, FBH Love, go there, sow that seed right now, even while I'm speaking. If not, go to Givelify, find the Fire Baptized Holiness Church, and look for the gold logo. Sow that seed tonight. God will increase you as you sow into the kingdom. If not, and you don't have a device, or you choose not to use a device, or even if you're on uh, this Zoom platform and you feel like it might disturb you or kick you out, it really won't. Go do it tonight. But if by chance you don't have any of those and your desire is to sow, you can call 1-800-381-4070. Somebody is waiting on your call now to receive your gift. Are you ready to sow tonight? Again, cash out. Dollar sign FBH love, sow that seed. Give the five, find the fire baptized holiness church and the gold logo, sow that seed. And or either call 1-800-381-4070. We believe God to increase you as you sow into the kingdom tonight. Watch God work. Father, in Jesus' name, as your people prepare to sow their gifts tonight, I thank you for rewarding them abundantly above and beyond all they could ask or think. I thank you, O oh God, for increase over your people as they sow into the kingdom, not giving begrudgingly, not giving with any other motive, but to sow into the kingdom and to bless the Lord with their gifts. Father, we ask, O oh God, as your people walk in obedience and as they do that which, O oh God, has been asked of them, I thank you because the windows of heaven are opening on their behalf now. 
Doors are opening. Lives are changing. Things are shifting on their behalf. I thank you for it. Now, I speak over their lives, oh God. Increase and deliverance. Healing and blessings, oh God. What they give tonight, on tomorrow they will see a return. Even some tonight before they close their eyes to fall asleep, they will see a return on what they're sowing into the kingdom. And Father, we thank you for it. And we'll bless and praise you forever. We'll give you glory and honor for these things we ask and believe that they are so in Jesus' name. And for your sake, we pray. Amen. 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 Expect increase. God bless you and God help you. It is my good pleasure tonight to present to you the spokesperson uh, at the oracles of God tonight, the one that God has chosen. He has anointed. He has gifted, yes, with the spirit and with the power to deliver a word to his people. Tonight, I ask that you prepare your hearts to receive what God has to say to us. Receive it tonight because he will speak. If your ears are open, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church. Yes, tonight is a profound preacher, one that we believe God has called for this day. I ask that you prepare your hearts to receive the National Mother Assistant of the Third Episcopal Diocese. Yes, our National Mother. Mother, the Reverend Mother, Jacqueline B. Elliott. As she prepares to come to us, uh, a selection, a musical selection will be given. And after that selection, the next voice you will hear will be the preacher for this evening, Mother Elliott. May God bless you. Here's my prayer for you. Music. Get ready, get ready, get ready. A word is coming through. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Are you? Oh, bless God. Is there anybody that's ready for the word? Just lift your hand. Just wave your hand. Just let us know you're here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Are you ready for the word? Well, mother, let's go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord and we give him glory tonight. Praise the Lord. In spite of everything, the Lord is great. We want to give honor tonight to our uh, presiding bishop, the chairman of the board, Bishop Patrick L. Frazier, Jr., and to Sister Sharon, to Bishop Davis and Sister Dorothy Davis, and to Bishop Rogers, thank you for the introduction tonight, Bishop. Praise the Lord. And to Sister Rogers, to Sister Brindley, Brenda Conley, praise the Lord, our executive secretary, and Dr. Ann Fanny. We certainly miss her, especially during the general council. I also want to praise the Lord for Mother Odessa McCoy. Praise the Lord. And to all of our national, international general officers, praise God. 
and to all of the saints, the delegates of this uh, quadrennial, this 33rd quadrennial general council to our families, our friends, our members. This has been a great, great week. And we thank God for it. Thank God because we feel his presence. We know that he is in our midst. I am honored tonight to speak. I, I don't know how happy I am, but I feel very honored. I feel very humble to be in this place tonight. And I would like to thank the committee for asking me to perform this duty to bring the word of God to you on tonight. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and loving kindness. We thank you for all that you have transpired during this week. We thank you for your word that you have sent to us through each speaker, Lord. It has been a blessing. Now, Lord, as I come tonight, I pray that you will anoint me afresh in the name of Jesus. Lord, open up our hearts that we might receive what the Spirit saith to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tonight, I would like to call your attention to a very familiar psalm, Psalms 42. Psalms 42, verses 7 and 8. Verse 7, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. I want to use for a subject tonight, the deep calleth the deep. The deep calleth the deep. Psalms 42 is the first psalm in book two of the psalm. In typical beautiful poetry, this psalm expresses a cry from the heart of God's people during a time of trouble. It is not a jubilant song of hope. It does not start with a shout of praise, but a lament of a person expressing depression. We will note that he does not surrender to his feelings of spiritual depression and discouragement. Instead, he challenges them and brings them before God. This song, this song is titled to the chief musician, a contemplation of the songs of Korah. The songs of Korah were Levites from the family of the Kohath. By David's time, it seemed that they served in the musical aspect of the temple worship. Korah led a rebellion of 250 community leaders against Moses during the wilderness days of the Exodus. God judged Korah and his leaders, and they all died. But the sons of Korah remained. And perhaps they were so grateful for the mercy that God bestowed upon them that they became notable praisers, notable musicians in Israel. The psalmist lament, deep calls to thee in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. What exactly does it mean? The deep calls to the deep. 
in the grandeur of nature, there are wonderful harmonies. When the storm agitates the ocean below, the heavens above hear the torment and answer to the clamor. It has been said that among the apt, in the day of tempest, the solemn, silent peak breaks through their sacred quiet and speak to each other. No doubt what the psalmist meant was that the wild ocean of trouble without him were answered to by the death of trouble in his soul. Now there are some questions about the setting of Psalms 42. However, the author seems to have been outside of Jerusalem and was unable to return. Verse four, he mentions how he used to go to the house of God with shouts of joy. Verse six, he speaks as if he is east of the Jordan River. Verse 10, he hears the taunting of an enemy. So most likely, the sons of Korah, the leaders of tabernacle worship, to whom the psalm is attributed, were accompanying King David as he was driven from Jerusalem by his rebellious son, Absalom. As David and those faithful to him fled for their lives, they looked back in sadness at their home in Jerusalem. This song is a record of their thoughts in that time of exile. Thirst was a very common experience in Israel. So it is a frequent theme throughout the Bible. Isaiah 41, 17 and 18 reads, when the poor and the needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I the Lord will hear them. I the God of Israel will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. In the verses leading up to the statement that the deep calls to the deep, the songwriter says that he has been thirsty for the presence of God, like a deer panting for streams of water. In the psalmist, the psalmist wasn't really thirsty for water. He was thirsty for God. He was not thirsty for the temple and the ordinance of the temple, but he was thirsty. He was longing for the fellowship with God himself. The exiles were longing for the Savior in tears while the enemies taunted them. Cut off from Jerusalem, the sons of Korah could only remember what it was like to take a part in worship with shouts of joy in the festive possessional. In their reminiscing, the psalmist attempt to encourage himself in the Lord and place his hope in God. He had confidence that he would once again be able to go to the house of God and praise him like he had done in the past. So he asks a question, when shall I come and behold the face of God? 
for a Jew in Israel is surely meant going to the temple in Jerusalem where God was believed to reside. To make matters worse was being in the company of those who wanted to discourage him. They wanted to make him feel in, the, in his time of need that God was nowhere to be found. He said they continually say to me, where is God? He confesses, my soul is cast down within me. Cast is a term used with sheep, which have turned themselves over onto their back and can't get up. It is a vulnerable and helpless spot to be in. Have you ever felt that your soul had been cast down? That you were turned over on your back and you couldn't get up? It is scary, scary enough to think about lying helpless on your back. But then to think about rapid waves crashing over you. The language of Psalm 42 is poetic and metaphorical. Deep calls to the deep at the noise of the waterfall. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Everything around was like an ocean tossed with tempest. His grief came wave upon wave and conscious as with a lightning flash lit up the ubus of his own inner man. It was as if waves and breakers were sweeping over him. Trouble was surging with one overwhelming swelling coming after another. The deep trials he faced kept coming, wave-like, deep after deep. The Hebrew translation of deep refers to the deepest depth of the sea. The sons of Korah exiled with David had lost all of their footing. They had felt, praise God, wave after wave, wave that plunged their soul into a bottomless ocean of sorrow and despair. The prophet Jonah used similar language to describe, to describe his predicament at the God discipline in his life. You heard him be into the depths, into the very heart of the sea, and the current swirled over me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. On the other hand, it seemed as the songwriter was expressing the fact that his soul was in deep need of God. He knew that he was in deep trouble on the outside, but deeper trouble on the inside. These two depths seem to have collided within him. He calls out from his place a profound need for the unfathomable greatness of God. A deep need calls for a deep remedy. James Smith and Robert Lee beautifully elaborated on this meaning of deep calls to deep in a multi-volume of their work. They said the deep a man's need calling unto deep the deep of God's fullness, and the deep of God's fullness calleth unto the deep of man's need. 
between our emptiness and his all sufficiency, there is a great God. We realize the meaning of deep calls to deep when we recognize that human needs are great, but the riches of God are greater. Our wisdom is shallow, but his knowledge and judgments are unsearchable. God thoughts are deep. His love is as deep as his immense heart, as he proved when he gave his only begotten son to die for us. Hallelujah. The height, the breadth, and the depth of God's resources are without measure. From the depth of David's despair, he found himself helpless, but he found himself in the depth of God's goodness. And he was able to say, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And on many days, for many of us, we can identify with the psalmist when everything feels like it's falling down all around us, or we feel like we are being consumed by the waves and the billows of life. For some, life is full of struggle and trouble, some misery of mind, others the quake of spirit, some grief and sorrow, others bear anxiety and anger and agony, some trials of discipline, others sick, others with physical pain. But in the words of the psalmist, he said, my tears have been my meat day and night. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. The years 2020, 2021, and now 2022 have been unpredictable, and we don't know what to expect. Next week, next month or even next year. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Hallelujah. Paul said, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God will not forsake us. Even in our darkest hour, Jesus is ultimately the one who bears the waves and breakers of God's reign. On the cross, he bore the sins of God's people from all places and all ages. His suffering was intensified by the agony of being cut off from God's presence during his dying hour on Calvary. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is my God, my God. Why? Have thou forsaken me? Uh, oh, church, the deep calleth for the deep. Could this have been the, 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 the depth of God, the Son's heart, calling out 
in veneration of the death of the father's heart and the bond of this union resonated between the two and love embraced wrath and it became the harmony of our redemption could this have been uh, where mercy and truth met together righteousness and peace kissed each other truth sprung out of the earth and righteousness looked down from heaven uh, the deed calls to the deed uh, and we are saved. Uh, the deed calls to the deed, uh, and we are sanctified. Uh, the deed calls to the deed, uh, and we are filled and baptized uh, with the Holy Ghost, uh, and that will fly. Uh, oh, the deed. Uh, 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 Calls for the deed. Um, Jesus, uh, as I say, uh, was the one who bears uh, the waves and the breakers uh, of God's wrath uh, because of Christ's hope on the cross uh, and because of our hope in Christ uh, after being submerged in the waters of death. Uh, he became the light of hope uh, and was found in an empty tomb. Uh, and on the third day, uh, he was raised by the glory of the Father uh, with all power in his hand. Uh, general counsel, uh, the 33rd general counsel, uh, saints uh, of the five baptized church. Uh, I want you to know tonight uh, that the deep uh, is calling for the deep. Uh, oh, mighty God, uh, help me tonight. Uh, the deep uh, is calling us uh, for a deeper relationship. Uh, the deep uh, is calling us uh, for a deeper uh, commitment. Uh, the deep. Uh, is calling us uh, to a deeper faith. Uh, the deep uh, is calling us uh, to a deeper sense uh, of humility. Uh, the deep, uh, I said the deep, uh, I'm talking about our Lord. Uh, he's calling FDH. Uh, he's calling the five baptized church. Uh, oh, God, uh, for the deep uh, is calling for the deep. Uh, we got to go deeper. Uh, we must go deeper. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, by the power of God, uh, by the anointing. Uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, in us, uh, we we <clears throat> and we shall go deeper. The deep uh, is calling for the deep. God is calling us to a deeper place in Him. Hallelujah! When we answer, when we go deeper, Hallelujah! We will follow and obey the call of God, our Father and our God. Hallelujah. We hear your call, Lord. We hear your call. We hear your call. Hallelujah. To go deeper. Hallelujah. Deeper. Deep in the word. Deep in prayer, Lord. We hear your call, God. Oh, God. I pray, Lord, that you will revive us. Hallelujah, so that we might go deeper. Strengthen us on every hand. Hallelujah, for the deep calling, for the deep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, the deep calling, for the deep. At this time, services is in the hand of Bishop Alonzo Rogers, presiding prelate of the third Episcopal Diocese, amen. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. My, 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 my.
What a word tonight. The deep calleth for the deep. And tonight we have heard a word from God. Thank you, Mother Elliot, for allowing the Lord to use you in such manner to speak to us tonight, calling us into a deeper place in God. Yes, the deep, call it for the deep. Prior to Mother sharing tonight, the video did not come forth the way it was hoped, but it is ready. And we do want to hear the selection from the Jamaica choir. Please receive this selection and after which we will receive the presiding prelate of the First Episcopal Diocese, Chairman of the Board of Bishops, Bishop Patrick L. Frazier, Jr. God bless. <laughs>
God bless you. Thank you, Jamaica Choir. Mother, we thank you so very much for that wonderful word that God uh, sent to us through you because after deep has called unto deep, I believe that we will be able to say, Lord, I am available to you. We're grateful for our wonderful board of bishops, Bishop Johnny L. Davis Sr. and Bishop Alonzo L. Rogers. We thank God for every uh, national officer, ruling elders, general officers, each of you tonight. We've certainly uh, heard the call from God that we should go deeper. It is time to leave the surface of things and let's go deep into God. Thank you, Mother, for giving us that wonderful word from the Lord. At this time, please receive the presiding prelate of the Second Episcopal Diocese, His Holiness, the Right Reverend Johnny L. Davis Sr. Thank you, Bishop Frazier. Certainly, we honor you tonight, along with your wife and family, and to Bishop Rogers and Sister Rogers and their family, to my wife, Sister Davis, and to our wonderful national officers, national mother and junior mothers, and every national officer of this grand old church. We're grateful for our executive secretary to the Board of Bishops, to our general secretary and associate general secretary, to each of you, these wonderful ruling elders, and every delegate of this 33rd Quadrennial General Council. We thank God for you tonight. And each of you, my brothers and sisters, that came on to be in this worship experience tonight. Thank you, Jamaica, for that lovely, lovely selection. I am available to you. And we enjoyed Mother on this evening. What a word from the Lord, the deep, calling the deep. Paul said that the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. He searches, it searches, and it knows the deep things of God. And Jesus spoke to his disciples when they were worn out, had fished all night long and ready to go home, take a bath and go to bed. He told them to launch out into the deep. Amen. And let down your nets for a drought. You're too close to the sh too, too close to the, to the shore. Get on out into the deep. Try it again. Do it again. Amen. He's calling us to go deeper, church. We've been in that deep place before. Let us go back to that deep place again that God is calling us to. Certainly we enjoyed Mother tonight. Thank you, Mother, for that powerful, powerful message on this evening. Please receive the presiding prelate of the Third Episcopal Diocese, His Holiness, the Right Reverend Alonzo L. Rogers. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Davis and Bishop Frazier for your remarks tonight. And again, the word was rich. Oh, bless God. The deep call is the deep. I think about it. The design of this grand church is for the deepening of our spiritual lives so that we may attain and impress every Christian believer to seek the highest Christian experience possible in this life. As we deepen in God, God calls us and draws us to the place of his purpose. As we deepen in him, he calls us to the place of his glory. As we deepen in him, he calls us into the place of his manifestation as we deepen in him. I thought about something uh, some time ago. I called myself being on vacation, went uh, and was out at the beach, got out there on a jet ski, didn't know how to swim, but just took off, went out there. And as it came to be, I flipped on the jet ski and down in the middle of the water, I went. Thank God for the life jacket. But in my mind, my instinct was to try to find the bottom so I could get back to shore. Don't laugh, Bishop Davids. But every time I plunged under the water, I could never find the bottom. 
I want to say to you that as I went, the current underneath the surface kept pulling me away. Listen, people of God, there is a current of the divine that's pulling us into a place that God has ordained for us. Fire baptized holiness church, flow in the current of the deep and go to that place that God has ordained. I guarantee you the manifestation of God is yours today as you walk in the deep. God bless you and God help you. Oh, bless God. That was a word tonight. I like that. Oh, bless God's name. Amen. I might have to pay you a royalty, mother. Oh, bless God. Amen. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Please receive at this time, Sister Brenda O'Connelly for our evening announcements. Bless you, Sister Carmen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Rogers. Uh, to this 33rd Quadrennial General Council. Members, Sister Revels and I were working during this short break we had this afternoon, still correcting emails. When you get off tonight, please check your email. You should have a ballot. Please complete the ballot so that we can see that everyone is in place. Please, the ballot is there. I've checked, mine's there, I didn't complete it, uh, but the ballot is in your inbox or maybe in your spam or junk, but you do, you should have a ballot uh, with the corrected emails that we've put in place. If you don't, please contact us and we'll work a little more to try to get some more corrections in. Uh, tomorrow is a travel day. So we ask your prayers for those of us who will be traveling to Charlotte uh, for the service on Saturday, for the election on Saturday. And remember that the session on Saturday will start at 11 a.m. We've been starting at one, so please be reminded that the session on Saturday will start at 11 a.m. And then uh, we'll have a night service, but we'll tell you more about that. Uh, I want to also remind you that the Joan Church will be doing a Super Sunday service on the fourth Sunday, June 26, and the DREs are working so that we can again recognize our high school and college graduates. We invite you to spread the word and be here to celebrate with them. Thank you, Bishop Rogers. Uh, we return the service into the hands of, who's in charge tonight? Bishop Rogers, Bishop Alonzo L. Rogers. Please receive him. God bless you, Sister Conley. And again, we encourage each of you, delegates, general officers, national workers, Go to your email. Matter of fact, I just opened mine. I'm clicking on the vote here. It has opened me up. I'm casting my vote now. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm casting my vote now. And what I want you to see is that even at this point, since I've done this, I'm checking my consent, sending submit, and there it is. Hmm, I have a receipt that says thank you for voting and participating in this vote and election. It's just that simple, it's done. It doesn't take long, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it doesn't take a lot of effort. Just those few steps. I encourage you right now, even while I'm preparing to dismiss you, go to your email. Find your email, click on it where it says click here to vote. Do it now, do it now, do it now. I'm believing that you can do it. I know you can. I'm just waiting to hear that you did it. Come on, everybody. Yes, come on, come on, come on, come on, do it. We pray that God will give everybody safe travel that will be traveling on tomorrow. And for those of you that will be meeting with us, on Saturday, we look forward to your safe arrival, that God will give you increased rest on tomorrow 
as you've been working these days. And we will come together on tomorrow, um, on Saturday through Sunday, and uh, to see what the Lord will do in our midst. This will be the first time we will have gathered since this pandemic for something other than a funeral. Hmm. Oh, bless God. And so I look forward to seeing you there on Saturday. National workers, ruling elders, come on. Amen. Come on. We're looking for you there on Saturday. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer for you tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, as we prepare now to close this session, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness that you have shown towards us. Look on us now, Lord, as we dismiss from this session. Give us good night rest. Wake us refreshed in the morning and allow your word to saturate our hearts and our minds. Keep us focused, Lord, on your purpose that we might accomplish those things that you have intended. Lord, as we deepen in you, call for us in those places that you have ordained our lives, our ministry, our witness, call for us, God, into those places, and we say yes to you now. Father, we bless you, because in spite of all that's going on around us, you are God, and you remain supreme. Keep us in your care, O oh God, and Father, bless those that will be traveling. Give safety, my God, in the name of Jesus. Let us all arrive to our destination safely and find all things well. Take care of us as we come together. Bless greater Mount Zion, Lord. Give them of your strength as they prepare to receive us. Oh God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we need you tonight and we realize that we can't make it without you. Now, God, this is your church and we're lifting it before you as you direct us, oh God. We say yes to your will, lead us to where you would have us to go. And oh God, we'll give you glory, praise, and honor for all of these things that we ask and believe according to your word, that they are so in Jesus' name. Now, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule and abide with this people here now and forevermore. Let everybody say amen. May God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer. Tell somebody, I love you.